Welcome everybody to Beginning Knitting, Knitting 101 on this Monday afternoon. Um, as Felicia said, my name is Claire. I'll be hanging out in the chat with you all and I'll answer any questions there, or I can forward them on to Darren, who's your teacher there on screen. Um, I'll also be putting the link to the handout here in chat, as well as to the pattern that we'll go over at the end of the class. Um, remember that this class is being recorded, and so you'll be able to watch it back again if you need to go over anything, um, you know, as many times as you need to later. And now that we're a couple of minutes into class and all of that's out of the way, I will turn it over to Darren. All right. Welcome to class, everybody. Today, we are going to learn the basics of knitting. So if you've never knitted before, if you don't know anything about knitting at all, you're in the right place. It's a great opportunity to learn the basics and to get some practice in. If you know how to knit already and you just want a review of some basics, it's a great time to get a good review as well. So if we want to go ahead and change the view to the view of my hands, we'll go ahead and jump right in and get started. Okay. Um, after class is over, I'm going to review the pattern to make this cowl and what we're going to learn today in class is everything you're going to need to know to make this. So even if you, if it's your first day knitting and you don't know anything at all, after you've had some time to practice, you will be able to make this cow maybe by the end of the week even, or maybe sooner, depending on how much time you have to devote to practice. So this, um, this is what we're going to learn today, that the skills to make this. And it's actually quite a nice cow to have. In class today, I'm going to be demonstrating with Lion Brand's Hometown Bonus Bundles. That's the name of the yarn. And this yarn is available on michaels.com or on lionbrand.com. And it comes in a wide variety of colors. Um, this one is called New York White. But for class today, I'm going to be demonstrating with the sample, this little um, ball of yarn that I have. And this one is called Dallas Gray. So it's the same yarn just a different color. And whenever you're buying yarn or using yarn, you do wanna look and see what size uh, needles it's recommending. And this one is recommending a knitting needle of nine millimeters or a size 13. So you always wanna to try to make sure you have the right size needle with the right size yarn that matches up with whatever pattern you're using, if possible, to get the best result, okay? Any questions about any of that before we get started? And I'm gonna jump right in if there are no questions. So the first thing we have to do when we're uh, knitting is uh, we have to attach the yarn to our knitting needle. So the way we do that is start with a slip knot. Now there are many, many ways of tying a slip knot and all of these ways could be correct. There's not a special magic knitters slip knot that you have to learn. So if you already know how to tie a slip knot, pretty much any slip knot will do. But I'm going to show you this way for people that don't know how to do it or if you want to learn a new way. And I call this way, it's called short over long. And what we do is we take our tail, which is the short piece, and we make a circle and we lay that tail over our working yarn. And then the working yarn is the long piece. So that's why it's called short over long. And then you put your hand in the center of that circle that you make. And then you reach underneath and you grab a hold of your tail and you're gonna hold with your other hand, you're gonna hold your working yarn and your tail together. And then you just loop back through and you end up with a slip knot. Now I'll do this several times. And you know you did it correct if when you pull your yarn, it pulls out and you end up with nothing. So let me do that again, do it a couple times. So you make a big circle, make a big loop and you have your tail over top of your working yarn. So short, the short piece over long. So just remember it's short over long. Put your hand inside of that circle, reach underneath. So you're gonna sneak underneath 
and you're gonna hold, you're gonna take hold of that tail with your hand, with your fingers. Now you're gonna, with your other hand, you're gonna hold on to the tail and you're gonna hold on to your working yarn. And then you just kind of loop that, make sure you see what I'm doing. You just kind of loop it around, loop around your finger. You just hold it with your finger, pull it back through and then cinch it up. And you know you did it correct if when you pull it, it just pulls out and you end up with nothing. So in real life, that's how easy it is. That's how it, that's how it looks in real life. In real life, I don't even lay it down. I just do it like that. So it's real easy once you get the hang of it. So you lay it out like this. So you kind of see what you're doing with the short, short piece over the long. You reach under, grab a hold of the tail with your fingers, and then you're gonna hold the end of the tail and your working yarn together. And then you just loop that tail back through and it makes your slip knot. Any questions? You guys try it? Did anyone get, did you get a slip knot yet or no? How are we doing? We do have a request to show it another way to do the slip knot if you have another one ready to go. Another one ready to go. This one is how, if you just hold it in your hand, so you, you have to grip both of these together really tight in one hand. And then in the other hand, you make, you open it up at the top to make a triangle. And then you put your finger in the bottom point of the triangle and you turn to make an X. And then you, with this finger and thumb, you reach down and grab one of the legs of the X and pull it up. And that gives you the slip knot. So lay the yarn in your hand, hold the tail and the working yarn together very tight so it doesn't slip. Make a triangle. So you've got this finger and thumb that you're gonna be pinching with, but you wanna use those to make a triangle. Put your finger in the bottom point and you're gonna turn your wrist. And what that does is that twists your yarn and you open it up and make an X. And then you take your finger and thumb and reach down and grab it and pull it through and make a slip knot. So that's, sometimes that's a harder way to look at it even. I find this way to be the easiest way. So, all right, so once you get your slip knot, this is how I tie a slip knot in real life. You just kind of turn it and pull it through. You wanna pop that slip knot right on your knitting needle. Now you don't wanna cinch it up super, super tight. It should slide easy on your needle. So don't get in the habit of pulling everything very, very tight. It should slide easy. There should be, you don't want it super loose, but you don't, don't want it super, super tight. You're gonna lay that on the left side. And then I have my other needle on my right side. And this is how we're gonna set ourselves up to start with the cast on, right? So the cast on, is how we put our stitches on our needle. So we've got our yarn attached to our needle with a slip knot and that we're gonna count that as our first stitch. Now we're gonna cast on a certain number of stitches. The pattern will tell you how many to cast on. For our exercise today, we're gonna to do maybe 20. And when you cast on stitches, that is establishing how many stitches you're gonna be using. And it will also establish how wide your piece is gonna be. So for a scarf, you might cast on um, 10, 15, 20, or 30 stitches, depending on how big your yarn is. For a baby blanket, you might cast on 100 or 200 or 250, depending on how big your yarn is and how big you want your blanket to be. So that's what's gonna establish how wide your piece is gonna be, depending on how many you cast on. So today we're gonna do about 20, just so that we have enough to practice with, but not too many. So you wanna hold your yarn like this in your left hand. You've got my needle in my yarn and then my right hand has nothing on it. And 
we're going to take the right hand needle and we're going to go through our slip knot. This is why you don't want it too tight because the both needles do have to go through it. So we're going to take our right hand needle, we're going to go front to back, we're going to go right through that slip knot, right like that. Let's see if I can get a little closer. Just going to go right through the slip knot, right like that. And we're going to make an X. And then I'm going to take my working yarn and I'm going to wrap it around my right hand needle. And then I'm going to pull my right hand needle back through bringing that loop of yarn with it. I'm gonna pull up a loop just big enough to work with. And then I'm gonna take my left hand needle and it's gonna jump over the loop, a little leapfrog back towards my thumb. And then on the way back up, we're gonna pick up that loop, transfer it to the left hand needle, and then cinch everything up so that it's snug. And now I have two stitches. You probably have lots and lots of questions. So let me just go through this a couple of more times and I'll try to do it slow so you can see what I'm doing and then we'll take questions in just a few minutes, all right? So now I have two stitches. I have my slip knot and my first cast on stitch. So you would just count that as one and two. You don't have to keep, you don't have to remember that's a slip knot because we're just gonna count it as a stitch. Now you always work in the stitch closest to the tip of the needle. So you wouldn't wanna be back here you're always gonna be working here, close to the tip of the needle. Okay. So with your right hand needle, you're gonna enter that stitch front to back. So you're gonna go straight through there, front to back, make an X. You're gonna wrap your yarn around your right hand needle, just like that. And then you're gonna pull that right hand needle back out. And as you pull it back out, you can see right here is that um, yarn that I wrapped around it. And I'm gonna kind of scoop that strand of yarn up with the tip of my needle, pull up a loop big enough to work with, and then pick that up with my left hand needle and put it back on, okay? Four easy steps, enter the stitch, Wrap your yarn, pull the loop through, transfer it to the left-hand needle, All right? I know there probably are a lot of questions. What questions do we have? And I'll try to go over each step slowly to show you exactly the answer to whatever question you're having. Well, we've got a couple requests to go back and do the slip knot. So I think we should probably just start from the very beginning. Okay, and then any particular place where people are getting hung up that might need more explanation? Uh, and then we do have another question about the first step after the slip knot goes onto the needle. Okay, so, so we'll short over long. And again, if you know how to tie a slip knot, if you've had to tie a slip knot for crochet or for any other um, knot tying situation that you may have been in. A slip knot is a slip knot. So you don't have to tie it the way I'm tying it. There are many ways of tying a slip knot. So if you already know a way, feel free to use however you know how. But for this method, you put the short tail over your working yarn. So it's short over long. You put your hand in the center of that circle. You put your fingers under, so you're going under the circle. You wanna hold on to that tail because you, you don't wanna pull it through and get nothing. You're gonna grab onto the tail. You're gonna loop it back through. And then if you wanna hold onto the working yarn as well, it'll help you to cinch everything up. And you know it's right if you pull it and it pulls out and you get nothing. So lay out a nice circle, short over long, hand inside that circle. You're gonna reach under, under the strand of yarn, grab the tail. You have to hold onto that tail with your other hand, 
hold on to the working yarn with your other hand. And then you're just looping it. See, I'm just, I have a hook around my finger and you just kind of cinch everything up. And if the knot is adjustable, if it slips like this, then you know you did it right. That's why it's called a slip knot because it'll just slip. And then you just pop that right on your knitting needle. And you kind of cinch it up so that it's kind of snug, but not too tight. It should move nicely on your needle. And you put that on the left. We have the one on the right, we'll have no stitches or yarn. And now we're ready to cast on, right? And when we cast on, so this counts as our first stitch. And for casting on, we want to, we want to go right through this loop right here. So this is a stitch, but it's also just a loop of yarn. So we're just going to go straight through front to back. Let me see if I can angle this so you can see what I'm doing a little better. So you're just going straight through front to back. And then you want to make an X. Now, sometimes when I've, when I've taught knitting in person, I find that students want to hold their needles parallel with each other like this. Um, that makes it extremely hard to work with. So if you're really having a hard time, double check and make sure you're not doing this. If you find yourself holding your needles parallel, you wanna cross them and make an X. So if you think about like a pair of scissors or a pair of pliers, um, they're shaped like an X and then they're able to work together that they're not parallel or else now they can't work together. So you wanna kind of make it shaped like an X. So I'll start over with that stitch. You wanna enter the stitch and then cross your knitting needles to make an X. Now, if you notice, I have my knitting needles, both of my knitting needles are in my left hand and my right hand is now available to do other things. One of the, hard, one of the hardest parts about learning how to knit is you have two needles and yarn that you're trying to manipulate. So you have three different things you're trying to, to manipulate, but you do only have two hands. So it seems like you need three hands to do this. But what you wanna get in the habit of like getting used to holding um, both needles in one hand. And then now my other hand is available to do, um, to wrap the yarn. So you wanna make sure you're wrapping in a counterclockwise motion and if you look at my needles, and if these were the hands of a clock, this is three o'clock, all right? So three o'clock. If you hold your working yarn at three, so three, two, one, blast off. So I'm going in a counterclockwise motion. So I'm going backwards, backwards in time. And then you bring it around the front. So that's the counterclockwise motion. And if it helps you to think of it as maybe I'm gonna go to the left and then make a hard turn and come back to the right, or I'm gonna go under and then over. It, you know, it doesn't matter how you're thinking about it, but just make sure you're going in this motion where you're going around the needle and then back to the front. And then we're gonna pull this right hand needle back out of that loop and we're gonna try to bring, so when we wrap our needle, we, we are wrapping a strand of yarn around that needle. And if you kind of pull it a little tight, what happens is um, you end up with that strand of yarn kind of right there. So that's it right there. And when you pull your needle back out, you wanna use the tip of that needle to, to scoop up that strand of yarn and bring it with you. And then you're gonna pick it up with the left hand needle. So you wanna take the left hand needle and we're gonna transfer that to the left hand needle. And then we're gonna cinch everything up so it looks a little more neat, not too tight. Two stitches. So you enter the stitch, wrap the yarn, bring the loop through, transfer it to the left-hand needle. Now here's a little nursery rhyme to help you remember. It's a memory crutch. You go 
in through the front door, run around the back, climb through the window, get in line Jack, because Jack has to get in line with the other stitches. So one, two, three, four. And here's another memory crutch that you might like. So I'm a pacifist, but this, this one is for people that are maybe a little more aggressive. So you stab it, you choke it, you pull up a noose and stab it again for good measure. Okay. Now, you know, depending on your life philosophy, you might relate to one of these better than the other one, but it's just four easy steps. Enter the stitch, wrap the yarn, bring that loop back through, transfer it back over to the left hand needle. Okay. So now that we've seen it a few times and we've talked about it, what questions do you have and what step seems to be the most confusing? Do you want to see a specific step that we're getting hung up on? We do have a question from Diane. She wants to know, can you show how to connect they are separating? And I'm not sure if she's referring to the stitches on the needle or the needles themselves. Well, if your stitches are separating, that might you might, maybe you have some of them that are really loose and some of them are much tighter and that will um, even out a little bit as you go. You can just kind of smush them together. Sometimes if you kind of give them a little, but I wouldn't worry about that so much at this point. Um, you know, we want to learn the motions first. We really don't need to worry about if the tension's right. I'm not sure what the other part of the question might've been. You just, you do want to try to keep your needles close together. You don't want to try to get in the habit of like separating the needles. You want the needles working together. So you do want to keep your needles close together as well. So I'm not sure if that, does that answer that question or what was the question? Possibly. Um, we do have some other questions coming in, so we'll keep exactly. going. Um, is the cast on a row considered a row one in your pattern? You know, it, not really, but kind of. When you're, when you're knitting a project, usually the pattern will tell you cast on 20 stitches, knit five inches of stockinette stitch or knit 10 inches of garter stitch or whatever. And when it tells you that, you're just gonna um, measure it from the edge of the cast on and measure it. So it, it kind of counts. But if you're really counting out specific rows, like if it's for some reason, if it says knit 10 rows of, of garter stitch or something, it, it technically does not count in that situation. So depending on what the pattern's telling you. Is that right, Claire? Was that how you would explain it? Sorry, I had to mute for a noisy card there. <laughs> yes, that is exactly how I would explain it. Yes. Okay. Anything um, else? Yes. Uh, Dominic wants to know, why do the stitches sometimes end up crossed over one another on the needle? Um, you, you, well, you just want to kind of make sure that you're keeping them in line. So if you let them cross over you know, like that, I mean, you, you just don't want to let them do that. You just want to make sure when you're casting on that you're lining them up neatly. You can use your, that's another thing. Um, for some reason, when I've taught this class in person, I find that new knitters, they don't want to use their fingers. It's like they feel like they can't touch the yarn with their fingers. They can only touch it with the needles. And so you, people end up trying to knit like this. It's super hard. You want to make sure that you're using your fingers to manipulate the yarn and put the yarn exactly where you need it to be and where you want it to be. And also that counts as with your stitches. So when I transfer this stitch over, um, you can put your finger, see how I have this finger kind of in between and take the needle out and then use this finger to kind of line them up. So you don't want to let them cross over. You, you just want to kind of use your fingers to manage them and keep them in order. Does that answer that? Was that what was happening? Yes, I think that was it. Um, let's see, we have a couple questions on how to size the stitches. Some people's are turning out really loose and some people's are getting tighter and tighter. 
Okay, so you don't want them to get too tight. So that's the main problem that you wanna to try to avoid. If they're too loose, um, eventually they will tighten up as you're practicing, but if they're too tight, it'll make it very unpleasant. So when you're making your stitches, so you don't wanna pull it tight, but you do want it to, to have some shape. So it should be loose enough so both needles can fit through comfortably. When you wrap your yarn, and when I first started knitting, I used to pull it really tight right here. And my knitting was very, very tight. But you kind of want to have let it rest loosely in your hand. So enter the stitch, wrap the yarn. When you bring it through, so this would be a chance of having things be too loose. And then you transfer it over. And if you let it be super loose like that, then you're, you're going to have very loose knitting. So you do want to kind of cinch it up a little bit, but don't get in the habit of pulling it really, really tight because then um, you'll, you'll have that habit and it'll be hard to break that habit. But if your stitches are super loose, go ahead and cinch them up a little bit and then check every now and then. Um, these are actually getting a little tight because I was pulling them, but check every now and then and make sure they move nicely on your needle. But try to have a, a loose, you know, don't be gripping everything really tight. Let it rest comfortably in your hand. Wrap it. Pull it through. Um, another reason why sometimes they do get too tight, if you're working way down here on the tip and you're forming your stitches down here on this tip and you're not pushing them up, by the time they get pushed up onto the thickest part of your needle, there's not enough slack in them to shape around the needle and they shape around the needle very, very tight. So what you wanna do to avoid that is after, you see how I'm doing my work on the, the shaft of the needle, the thickest part, that'll help keep your stitches shaped right and not too tight. And then put it on and put it on all the way up where it's the, the largest part of the needle. You don't wanna, do your work down there on that tip if you can avoid it. Any other questions? Does that answer? Does that answer that? Yeah, I think that's probably the most common error when people are sizing it on the smaller tip of the needle there. Um, I would also say too that as you go along and you get more comfortable with it, your tension will probably change then as well. Yeah, that's... Um, as you're knitting and practicing, so the practicing is the most important thing. Um, you're, it'll, it will become more comfortable in your hand and this tension will even out and become very nice, just kind of naturally on its own. So that's just kind of something that comes with practice. Okay. Anything else? Are we ready to see the knit stitch now or? One last question. Um, Cindy wants to know, how can you tell if you transferred the stitch to the left needle correctly? Like if you grabbed, uh, if you didn't rotate the needle the correct way and it went on there crooked. Well, let's do it wrong and see if we can tell. So correctly, the, I'll show you the correct way. You're supposed to take the left hand needle. It jumps over the stitch back towards your thumb. And then you want to scoop it up from the back side. That's the correct way. And let's look at an incorrect one to see if we can tell the difference. So incorrectly, and this is what you tend to want to do is just transfer it over like that. So, you know, it's a very subtle difference, but you see how, let's see if we can get a good view of that. It almost looks like it's leaning the opposite direction. If I exaggerated a little bit where these kind of look like they're getting in line that way and you can kind of push it in line, but if you're kind of letting things relax. And then when I want to knit this, I'm going to do another stitch. When I want to go through here, it's very tight. And if you see it's opening up for me, it I feel like that would should be the correct place to enter the stitch right here. But the tricky bit is, is because it's on there wrong, it's presenting in the wrong direction. So the correct place to enter the stitch should be right here, but because it's on there wrong, it's presenting in the wrong direction and that's gonna be the easiest way. So if you go to enter the stitch in the correct direction and it feels really tight or kind of not comfortable, um, give it a 
check. And if it is wrong, see, all you have to do is take it off and twist it and put it back on correctly. And now you can see they're all kind of lining up really nice. And when I go to do that stitch, it opens up nicely for me. And then I'm ready to do that next one. That's a good question. So that kind of stuff does come up. All right, so let's um, let's do a couple of the knit stitch and then we can start back over at the beginning if we need to. We can do whatever you guys need to do at this point, okay? So for casting on, um, we decided how many we're gonna cast on and that establishes how many stitches we're gonna work with and how wide our piece is gonna be. And so knitting will add length to our project. So at this point, I could knit 10 rows, I could knit 100 rows, I could keep going and make a scarf. Uh, it just depends. So that's going to add length to our project. And the knit stitch is very, very similar to the cast on. It starts out exactly the same. You enter the stitch, wrap the yarn, bring that loop through, but instead of transferring it back over, all we're going to do is we're going to kick that loop right off the end. Let me show you that again. You enter the stitch, wrap the yarn, bring the loop back through, and then we're going to transfer it over. So now we're maintaining stitches on both needles. And at this point, you want to be very careful that you don't let the stitches slip off your needle or they can unravel. So you want to use, I like to use my pointer fingers and they kind of guard the tips of my needles to keep the stitches from slipping off by accident. So you enter the stitch, wrap the yarn, bring the loop through, transfer it over. And here's another rhyme. It's real similar to the first one. In through the front door, run around the back, climb through the window, off jumps Jack. So instead of getting in line, he's jumping off. Or you can stab it, choke it, scoop out its guts, and then throw it off a cliff. And I split my yarn right here. So you don't want to split your yarn. So I'm going to fix that. So you stab it, choke it, not too tight, not too hard. Scoop out its guts throw it off a cliff, all right? So whatever whatever philosophy you like better, but just remember four easy steps. One, two, three, four. Okay. What questions do we have? I'll be glad to answer any questions or start or demonstrate anything again. Looks like everyone's still very concentrated on their knitting or both of their hands are full of needles. Yeah, that's what you do. You give everybody something to do with their hands and then they can't type in questions, right? That's not good. We want questions. I'm splitting my yarn right there. I'm not paying attention. So you do wanna make sure that you are paying close attention and that you're finishing each step. You don't wanna like only do part of a step, you want to make sure you're finishing each step completely. Now I'm getting to the end of my row and I wanted you guys to see what it looks like at the end of the row and how to start a new row. So everybody always has questions. For some reason, they get to the last stitch and they're like, what do I do? What do I do to the last stitch? What, what, you know, what, what do I do? I'm at the last stitch. Well, the last stitch wants to be treated like everybody else. So we're not gonna discriminate against the last stitch or we're not gonna treat it any differently. So we're down to the last stitch. You just do the same thing. You enter the stitch, wrap the yarn, bring it through, transfer it over. And so now if you see what happens, my left hand, I have no stitches. All of the stitches are gone from my left hand needle and now all of the stitches are in my right hand needle. So what we do in this situation is we just trade. So now I'm gonna start my next row with all of my stitches in my left hand needle and my right hand needle will be empty. 
But before we start the next row, let's look at what we've done. So um, sometimes it's gonna be all twisted and look really messy. So I like to just kind of give everything a gentle little snug up, right like this to kind of line everything up nice. So you can kind of see what you did, make sure it looks all right. And at this point you might not know, but you know, just make it look a little bit neater. And you don't want to knit with your tail, so kind of hold that tail out of the way. Okay. So the correct way to knit, and then I don't really know how many stitches I started out with because I was just randomly casting on, but as a beginner and you're practicing, I want you to count your stitches and know exactly how many you're working with. Maybe you have 10, 15, or 20, or 17, whatever you have. After each row, you should count your stitches and make sure you're maintaining the same number of stitches. Otherwise, you might be adding stitches or losing stitches somewhere along the line. Um, it's, but you do want to try to practice maintaining the same number of stitches. Okay. So starting this new row, you just take your needle and you enter that stitch. Enter the st It's just the same motion now over and over. Wrap your yarn, bring it through, transfer it over, okay? I want to show you a couple of, there's, a, an, a, there's an opportunity to make a mistake right here. And I want to show you what could happen and how to avoid it. So when you want to start any row, you're starting the second or third or fourth row, it doesn't matter. You want to look for a second and make sure everything's correct. So you should be able to see your working yarn um, clearly my working yarn is going this direction, it's going through the stitch, it's going over the needle and towards the back. So I can see my working yarn and I can see the path it's taking very clearly. Now, if it's twisted, and sometimes it gets twisted like this, and if you're looking at your stitches, so like one, two, three, four, five, it looks like I have um, two stitches right here at the end. And if you knit this, you could very easily knit that and then knit this and then start moving on. So one, two, three stitches. But this is incorrect and you want to double check for this. So the first thing I want to look for is I see my working yarn. It's not clear where it's going. It's sneaking towards the back. So if your working yarn is sneaking and hiding in the back, you know, if something's sneaking and hiding, then that's a clue that something's going on you want to watch out for. But here's the test. So before you start knitting any row, you want to hold on right under where that row is starting, under that stitch, and pull it. So see what happens when I pull that? So see how that, that brings that up? So you want to redirect that to the front, cinch everything back up. And now, what, now it's in the correct position. If I pull it, see nothing changes. Nothing's changing now. So I know it's correct. And if it's looped around the back incorrectly, that could give me an extra stitch because I'll knit both legs of that stitch. So give it a little pull to double check and make sure it's right. Um, that's an opportunity to make a mistake. You could add a stitch by mistake, okay? So I'm gonna start my row. I'm gonna pull my stitch just to make sure you don't wanna pull it out of shape. You just wanna pull it just to check. And then you enter the stitch, wrap the yarn, bring it through, transfer it over. And this is why knitting is relaxing is because it is, um, it's the exact same motion over and over. And once you get the hang of it, it does become very relaxing. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but as you practice, it will get to be very, very relaxing. Okay, what now, there must be questions. I was gonna say, everybody finished this row and we have a lot of questions now. Okay. <laughs> um, question for you while you're knitting, how best to hold the working yarn? So that's probably a point of, um, a lot of people could have a lot of opinions about that. Um, some people will kind of wrap it around their finger. Some people will kind of tension it sometime between their fingers like that. I just kind of hold it like this. And as you're practicing, you'll come up with better ways of doing it. Um, some people hold it like this and they, they flick it around. I can't do that. 
there's, there's a thousand ways. If you talk to a thousand knitters, you'll probably come up with five or 600 different ways. Um, you can also hold it in your left hand. So when I'm knitting in real life, this is how I knit. I hold the yarn between these two fingers. And I don't have a problem. I like that way. So you can hold it in your left hand. You can hold it in your right hand. You can wrap it around your fingers. You can drop it each time and pick it up. Um, as you're practicing, you know, you just want to see what's going to be the most comfortable. Anything else? Uh, related question. We had a couple of people asking about how you hold the tail so it doesn't get in the way. Um, I think we had one person who unfortunately started knitting with their tail and only realized that at the end of the row. The best thing to do is to keep a fairly short tail. You want the tail to be about... Um, four or five inches, no more than six inches. You want it long enough that you can weave it in at the end for finishing, but you don't want it so long that you're gonna knit with it by mistake. And then you can, you can kind of, you know, maybe ball it up and tie it in a little loose knot so that you don't knit with it by mistake. Um, even the most experienced knitter might do that. Have you ever done that, Claire? Do you ever do that? I've done it every now and then, knit with it by mistake. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, every once in a while. Yeah. Um, we have several questions about transferring the stitches. I think we have some that are talking about casting on and some that are talking about moving the stitch from the left needle to the right. Um, someone says they end up stealing a stitch and so they're losing stitches along the way. They end up doing what? Losing a stitch along the way? Uh, she says she's stealing a stitch that she already had. I'm not sure what that means. I don't know. Um, let me show you though. We'll talk about it as we go. Okay, so I have no, I have zero stitches on my right hand needle. So you enter the stitch, wrap the yarn, bring it through. And this, I mean, there's really, it seems like there should be more to do here, but there's not. You just, you just slip it right over. And it almost feels like it's, you're doing something you shouldn't be doing, but that's, that's kind of what it is. So enter the stitch. Wrap the yarn, bring it through. And if you can actually use your finger to kind of kick that one off if you want to, to kind of keep track. And then if you want to keep track of your stitches, you can use this finger to go kind of separate them and go in between them so that you separate it from that one so you don't end up doing anything to that one by mistake. Um, enter this stitch, wrap the yarn. Bring it through. Trans is it, does that answer the question? I'm, I'm not sure exactly what the stealing of another stitch was referring to. And then use this finger to kind of maintain these stitches on here without letting them slip off by mistake. You can separate these with your finger to make sure you're not stealing that one. Enter the stitch. Okay. Does that answer the question? Do we want to see it again from yes, the beginning? That, or the... that does answer the question. Okay, she was good. confused because she thought she got should be having stitches on both needles, the same number. But no, you're moving them from one needle to another. Yes, one at a time. So it'll gradually get bigger and then eventually they'll all be over there. And we have a couple people asking about the stitch on the very end being a little bit looser than all the rest of them. Yeah, the reason that is, is because knit stitches are only truly happy and well behaved if they have a stitch on each side of them, one above them and one below them. So the one on the end, like this one on the corner, it doesn't have anything on two sides. So it's gonna be a little bit wonky. Um, this one always seems to be a little bit loose, but by the time you knit the next row, it'll tighten up. So um, that just kind of comes with practice. Any other questions? We've got a couple questions about starting that first row after you've cast on or starting the next row after you've knit the first one. Okay, well, let me get to the end of this row. So starting the second row, is the same as starting all the rows, like all the rows after that. 
So let me just get to the end of this row and I'll show you how to start it. And then I think we need to move ahead to um, how to join a new ball of yarn because we, we are running out of time. Okay, so I'm just finishing up a row right here. And it doesn't matter if I just finished my first row or my fifth row or the hundredth row. You start the next row exactly the same. So you take all of your stitches from your right hand, transfer them back to your left hand. And then I've got my right hand needle now has zero stitches. And all you do is you just start knitting. There's nothing special to be done. You just enter the stitch, wrap the yarn, bring it through, transfer it over. And then you keep going one at a time. So there's nothing special to be done there when you're starting that row. Um, and even when you're starting the very first row, uh, it's a little, it seems like it's a little different because there are no stitches um, on it yet. You just have your cast on, but you just take each one of those cast on stitches, um, look at it as a stitch, and then just knit them one at a time. Okay. So I'm going to, to jump ahead a little bit, kind of push forward and show you what happens if you need to change um, colors or add a new ball of yarn. So what's going to happen is eventually you're going to knit through this entire ball of yarn or maybe there's a knot tied in it where the yarn had been broken and somebody tied a knot in it. Or maybe somebody sneaks up behind you and cuts your yarn like that. And that would be a horrible thing to do to somebody, but it could happen. Um, so now what, what the moral of the story is, is I have to add more yarn. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this pink yarn um, to show you how to do a stripe. So you could continue on with the same color or you could be um, adding a stripe. So now this is one of those things that's very easy to do um, because it's so easy to do, people try to make it really hard. So just enjoy the fact that some things in life are easy and let's not make this overcomplicated. So this is my old yarn and I'm not gonna be knitting with this anymore because there's not enough to worry about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this out of the way so I don't knit with it by mistake. I don't wanna knit with it by mistake so nothing special, I'm gonna hold it out of the way. I'm gonna add this new yarn. I'm gonna save a tail about four or five inches um, to weave in the ends for finishing. Now I'm not gonna knit with this tail. So I'm gonna hold it out of the way so I don't knit with it by mistake. So just take the gray one and the pink one, take the old one and the new one, and just kind of hold them out of the way. So nothing fancy, I just don't wanna knit with them by mistake. I don't wanna get confused with what I'm doing. Now this new pink yarn is not attached to my project, but I'm gonna hold it right where my um, working yarn would be. So right where it's convenient for me to knit with, I'm gonna hold it there. And then I'm gonna just pretend that everything's normal. There's nothing going, nothing unusual is happening. So I'm gonna enter my stitch, wrap my yarn, bring the loop through, transfer it over. So not, not one thing is new or complicated. And then you just continue knitting with the new color or the new, um, the same color, but the new ball of yarn. You just continue knitting like nothing new, like nothing is going on. Now you're gonna see videos and hear other people talk about, oh, you should knit with two, with the old one and the new one held together. Um, you should do this, you should do that. People have come up with all kinds of crazy um, ideas for solutions that there is no problem for. So um, yeah, just try to keep it as easy as possible. Any questions about that? I don't have any questions about um, adding a new ball. But I was going to say, did we mention what stitch we're learning today? Um, this is the knit stitch. Did I not, did I not say that? Um, yeah, so this is the knit stitch. The first one we learned, the first thing we learned was the slip knot. The second thing we learned was casting on. And now, finally, we learned how to do the knit stitch. And the knit stitch is what will continue to add length to your project. So as, as I've knitted my rows, um, I've gone just from this very edge of the cast on, I've added some length, now I've got this pink. And if I keep going, then my project will keep growing this direction. 
and I could keep going until it's a scarf. You could keep going until it's a, a whole mile long if you wanted to for some reason, whatever. You can just keep going and on and on and on forever. Um, that's what will add length to your project, okay? And then after you, so now I have all these ends and one problem you could face is because they're not attached to anything, it could end up slipping out. So you do wanna keep these kind of snug and I'm gonna show you how to weave in the ends, but I don't always like to weave in the ends until um, maybe I'm halfway through a project. So what I like to do is I'll tie these in a snug little bow that's temporary, because I'm gonna come back and untie that later and weave in my ends. But what that does is that kind of helps keep my tension nice and even. And you don't wanna weave in your ends until you're 100% sure you're happy and satisfied with it. Because once you weave in your ends, if you decide you wanna rip your work out and start over, it, it does make it hard to rip it out if the ends are woven in. Okay. But if you're making a big project with lots of ends, you, it's not very much fun to wait until the very end to weave them all in at once because it does tend to be a bit tedious. So, all right. Any questions? So and we that, do. Oops, oh, go sorry, ahead. Darren. Um, that would be the same method for adding a new ball of the same color, correct? Absolutely. So for ending our work, we can't just like say this is finished. I just need to make a little piece for some reason. You don't want to just pull your needle off the stitches because they'll all unravel. So we have to end it in a specific way to keep it from unraveling. And that's called binding off. So we're going to bind each one of these stitches one at a time. And it's very similar to the knit stitch. So let me show you how to do it. You do want to make sure you're doing this very loosely, looser than, than you might think you should. So we start off with just a regular knit stitch. So we have one and two. So I'm going to knit two knit stitches just like normal. And then you're going to take, so I have one and two. You're going to take the, this one. You're going to kind of stretch it a little bit. It's going to leapfrog over and drop off the end. And we're going to maintain this one. And you can see it's not just hanging free, it's looped it's looped around this other stitch. So it's actually quite secure. So now I need two stitches. I'm gonna knit one more. I have one and I'm gonna knit another one. So two, I have one and two. I just want only two. You're gonna take one, stretch it a bit, kind of hold on to the second one with your finger and it's gonna leapfrog over and you're gonna let it jump off the end but maintaining the second stitch Knit one more. You can use your finger as well. So some, when I first learned this, it was easier to do with my finger. So you're gonna take the first stitch, it's gonna leapfrog over and off the end, and you're maintaining that second one. And then you're getting this edge that's bound off and secure. Any questions about that? You do wanna make sure you're doing it very loosely um, it does tend to have a tendency to become tight. And I'll show you what happens when you get to the very end. As I'm knitting to the end, any questions that I could answer? Um, we've had a couple of people ask what kind of knitting needles you're using. You know, I've just had, these are just wooden ones that I've had forever. And I don't even, I was looking all it says is nine millimeters on them. It doesn't say who made them, but I do like a wooden needle. Um, some people like metal, some people like plastic. I find the wooden to be a little less slippery. Um, it just depends on what you like best. And sometimes it depends on what yarn you're using. If you have a slippery yarn, you don't want a slippery needle, maybe. Maybe you do, I don't, you know, whatever. What do you think, Claire? I would say that um, like a wooden or bamboo needle is probably better for beginners because it's not so slippery. Yep. All right, so I'm almost to the end. So let me show you what you do to that very, very last stitch. 
So remember, I said you always need two stitches for the bind off. So I've got one and two. I'm gonna jump over. Now I'm down to one stitch and um, there's not another one to work with. So you wanna cut your yarn, leaving a long enough tail for finishing. And then you just wanna pull this kind of straight up. So you can see it's just gonna go through. You're gonna put up and that end's gonna pop right through. And it's um, securing, it's secured in that stitch above it. So everything is nice and secure, all right? So now for weaving in the ends, you wanna untie that little bow that we put in. You wanna use a large eye blunt needle. This one, it's, um, it has a large enough eye for yarn and it's blunt, it's not sharp because we're going between the strands of yarn, we're not piercing them. Okay. And you wanna thread that on your yarn. So give it a twist. thread it on. And I'm going to show you right here. It's very easy to see because I've got two colors. So this, it's kind of like a wavy line. This is how I like to weave in my ends. So this looks like a frown and this looks like a smile. So we've got a frown and a smile. It's kind of going this direction. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go up through that one. So they're kind of C shapes that are kind of concave. And I didn't mean to go through that piece. So I'm gonna take that piece off. So they're kind of C shapes. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be always going through the concave side or the side that's kind of open. So we're gonna go down through here. And then back up. down. And the main thing with weaving in your ends, you do want it to be nice and secure. You want to make sure you're not distorting your fabric um, or adding any kind of uh, unsightly texture or bumps. So it's nice to kind of massage it out to make sure you didn't pull it too tight. And then you want to go up to the next row. And I didn't leave quite a long enough of an end. So here's a trick that I'm gonna show you because this tail is very short. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weave my needle through all the stitches first. So you can see how I've woven my needle through and then I'm gonna pull that end through and that gives you, and then kind of massage it out a little bit and then snip it close to the surface of your fabric now you'll notice I did not tie any knots. Um, knots come untied, knots leave an unsightly bump or they don't look very nice. They will always betray you and work their way to the front of your work and show up for people to see and they will judge you. So you don't wanna tie knots. You wanna finish your work in the most professional way possible. And so what you wanna do is you wanna weave in your ends about two to three inches one way, go up, weave in your end two to three inches back the other way and then trim it off um, nice and flush. So you should probably leave, I said four to a six inch long tail. Um, you could leave up to a seven or eight inch long tail. You just don't wanna knit with it by mistake um, and you don't wanna waste a lot of yarn. Any questions about that? Do we wanna look at the pattern for the cowl quickly? Oh, yes, we do have a request to look at the pattern, and I know that some people are going to have to go right now. So I want to remind you all that the class is being recorded, and you'll be able to watch it in about 24 or 48 hours on michaels.com slash classes or on the Michaels YouTube channel. Sorry, I'm looking for my copy. Here we go. Yay, I have a copy. Okay, so this is a very, very easy pattern. Um, you might not be able to read it, but you'll be able to look at your copy or you can always print another copy. Um, this one is available on lionbrand.com for free. It's called the Knit Level One Cow and you can print as many as you want. And here is the number. So you can either search by this number or by Knit Level One Cow and print your own copy. 
So it gives the size of the cow, it gives the materials. And I did wanna to touch on this. Um, it calls for heartland thick and quick redwood in and it's using two balls. But I chose a different yarn. I'm using um, hometown bonus bundle. And with hometown bonus bundle, I only needed one ball of yarn. Um, and it's calling for size 11 knitting needles, which is an eight millimeter. Now I'm using a different yarn, so I've also chose to use a different size needle. Um, the yarn that I'm using suggests a nine millimeter, so that's what I went with, a nine millimeter. And I did this on purpose because I wanted you to see that if you find a pattern, even if you can't get the right yarn, or maybe the yarn's discontinued, you can still make it work. You can still, um, especially if it's a, like a cow or a scarf or a baby blanket, if it's a little bigger in the end, it's gonna be fine. So you don't have to follow these rules exactly. Sometimes you can you work outside the rules. Okay, so for the cow, you're gonna cast on 28 stitches. You're gonna work in garter stitch. So garter stitch just means you're gonna knit every stitch on every row. And that's perfect because that's all we know how to do right now. So you're gonna cast on 28 stitches, you're going to knit every stitch on every row until the piece measures about 32 inches. Maybe it's 33, maybe it's 31 um, from the beginning. Then you're going to bind off, cut your yarn, leaving a 20 inch long tail. Now you're going to leave such a long tail because you're going to use that tail for seaming. And quickly, I'm going to show you, I have this unfinished one. Um, hopefully you can see. So it's going to tell you to, um, lay it out and put one twist in it. And that's what's gonna give you that kind of Mobius twist. So you lay it out like this, so it's 100% flat with no twist in it. And I don't particularly love the twist, so I probably wouldn't even put the twist, but if you want the twist, all you do is you just simply twist it like that one time. And then this is my 20 inch long tail. I'm gonna quickly show you a very fast seaming technique because we are over. I sorry I ran over. Okay, so when I'm seaming, I do recommend also using some clips to clip it in place because knitted fabric is very stretchy and you don't want to have one end end up being longer than the other. Okay, so I'm just gonna go across, you're gonna find a nice corner. Now, don't be afraid of seaming. A lot of people get very intimidated when you tell them you have to seam something. But because we're seaming it with the same yarn we made it with, your seam is gonna look nice. Um, <clears throat> so if you look across the top, this is my cast, my bound off side, and this is my cast on. And you can see it looks like this little V shape on each one. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick up two strands of yarn, you're gonna go under that V shape and only that deep. And you're gonna go on the other side the same. And because we're doing that, it will space, we're gonna use that to space our stitches the same and always go the same depth. And then your seam will be very neat because you don't want to be tempted to like not pay attention to what you're doing and like take a very deep stitch. You're always going to be picking up here, just two strands of yarn deep, just two strands of yarn. So you can kind of see where I'm going there. Does it show up? And bring it through. And you can whip stitch it, which means you'd go back on this side, but I like a running stitch. You can decide um, if you Google whip stitch or running stitch for knitting, you can watch videos on YouTube and see what you like better and you just go and if you make it you seam it and you wear it a couple days and you decide oh I think the seam doesn't look nice you can take it out and give it another try knitted fabric is very forgiving you're not going to ruin it and then every now and then just give it a little stretch to make sure you're not pulling it too tight and then you'll just finish it um, and weave in your end okay um, I know we kind of covered a lot today and I kind of ended up going kind of fast towards the end, but if you have any questions going forward, um, you can contact me on Instagram or TikTok. You can send me a direct message. My Instagram um, screen name is Mr. M-I-S-T-E-R Woolly Bear. 
Uh, maybe Claire will put that in the chat so you can see it. And it's it's Mr. Wooly Bear. It's on TikTok or Instagram. And then on Facebook, it's just my name, just my name spelled out the regular way. So um, I do try to answer questions as quick as I can. So, you know, I want you to practice and keep going. And then next week, we're going to learn how to make the pearl stitch. And we're going to learn how to make a, a hat to match the cow. So it'll be very nice. So if you have any questions, let me know. Okay. How are we doing, Claire? We got a flurry of thank yous and last minute questions coming in here. Okay. Um, just in case, before we go, I'm going to put the handout in the chat one more time in case anybody needs that. Um, and if you didn't get the pattern already, I'll put that in there as well. You can also find it on lionbrand.com. Um, and hopefully, we will see you all next week for Knitting 102. And this class is recorded. So remember, you can watch it tomorrow or contact me with questions. Okay. All right. Thanks for coming to class, everyone. Don't forget to practice. <laughs>